In this video, I'm going over my top 5 most overpowered builds that take advantage of the new Relana's cameo to easily break the game's difficulty. First, I will show you the performance of each build in New Game Plus, and then I will explain their full equipment and stats. To avoid being repetitive, all of these builds will deal more damage if we wear the Rakshasa's armor set combined with Bleed, Poison or Madness buffs. So feel free to use these tools if you want to increase the power of each build to make them even more broken. First, we have the new Relana's Twin Blades, a pair of extraordinary light gray swords designed to be quick, destructive and over elegant. I really love the stylish moveset of this weapon and its amazing unique skill based on fire and magic damage very similar to the Sword of Night and Flame. Both attacks are quite strong now. The magic version receives the best buff while the fire attack only receives a stance damage buff. However, that is highly appreciated as we can make a more efficient use of this weapon's skill regardless of which attack we choose. I always loved this weapon but it was a little underwhelming before its recent buff. Now it is indeed a very reliable weapon. We are going to be using the Relana Twinblade Sun Plus 10 and then until we have available to cast Storming Buffs. And the best stuff we can use as we are not going to use a high level of dexterity is the Azure's Glintstone Staff. It will allow us to cast Terra Magica as fast as possible. Remember that you can use any weapon with the Raptor of the Mistash of War to be able to dodge the Radan's Light Explosion attack with this. I'm going to be wearing the Relana's Armor Set just for style, be mindful that if you use the Rakshasa's Armor Set you will deal more damage. The best talismans we can use for this build are the Shard of Alexander, the Relana's Cameo, the Fire Scorpion Charm for the heavy attack or the magic scorpion charm for the light attack and the old lord's talisman to increase the duration of our buffs as much as possible. You can also use both scorpions at the same time but I don't believe this is actually optimal so it's up to you. The same thing will happen with the flask of wondrous physic. We are going to use the blood sucking crack tier and the flame shrouding crack tier for the heavy attack and the blood sucking crack tier with the magic shrouding crack tier for the light attack. But if you don't like the blood sucking crack tier and you really want to have both attacks available then using the magic and flame shrouding crack tier at the same time might not be a bad idea especially if you are going to use this duality combination. But in my opinion the best you can do is focusing on one attack to deal the max damage possible with it. This weapon devours stamina so be sure to craft some pickle turtle legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. In order to obtain the max performance of this weapon and to have an optimal build we are going to use 50 on vigor, 30 on mind, 40 on endurance, 14 on strength, 16 on dexterity, 60 on intelligence and 60 on faith. Golden Vow, Howl of Shabriri and Terra Magica are going to be our main buffs. Remember to level up your scattered blessing all the way up to 20 to get the max damage possible in DLC scenarios. If you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring builds, MMOEXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring today's video. Next we have the extraordinary Moonbeam, one of my favorite katanas of the game and one of the most powerful weapons too. In my latest Moonbeam video, I was actually pointing how useless it was to use the Relana cameo back then. Since it was a lot better to just pump the skill like a maniac getting a substantially higher amount of damage compared to holding the attacks to get the buff of the talisman. But now it turns out that with that quick activation time and that incredible 45% buff, holding the attack for a second is completely worth it. Let me know in the comment section how do you feel about the latest patch of Elden Ring. For this one we are going to use the Moonbeam on plus 10, any skill we have available, the Asus Glintstone staff to cast her magic as fast as possible, but in this case it is not that necessary because we are using a high level of dexterity so so if you don't have this stuff feel free to use any other you want and any weapon with the raptor of the main stash of war to easily dodge the radan's light explosion attack the story of every day guys i'm going to be rocking the theoler's armor set with the circlet of light merely for aesthetical reasons remember rakshasa's armor set for max damage in this case the spell we set is a good alternative as well but this rip is immaculate so i will keep it this way the best talismans we can use for this build shard of alexander relana's cameo magic scorpion charm and the blade of mercy i'm using the blade of mercy here because we are going to increase our damage after each critical hit by 20% and as the transient moonlight deals a very decent amount of stance damage this strategy is very optimal. But you can also use the roaring winds or insignia, the dagger talisman or even the old lord's talisman to increase the duration of your buffs. In our flask of wondrous physic we are going to be using the blood sucking crack tier and the magic shrouding crack tier. This is the best combo but in case you want to change one of these the stomach crack tier goes very well with this build and the thorny crack tier is not a bad alternative too. And because of the speed of the weapon the thorny crack tier seems to be a very decent alternative too. But as I see the things the blood sucking and the magic shrouding crack tier are the best tiers for this build. To get the most out of this weapon and to have an optimal build we are going to use 40 on vigor we don't need more, 24 on mind, 40 on endurance, only 12 on strength you don't need more, 60 on dexterity, 60 on intelligence and 33 on faith. Once again golden vow, howl of shabriri and terra magica are going to be our main buffs. Do not forget your scattered tree blessing on the level 20 to deal the max damage possible in the DLC. You know that I am a big fan of samurai like characters so in this case we will use the nagakiba with the 
Crimson Sheath for the strongest targets and the Great Katana with the overhead stance for those who want a bigger blade. I decided to use the Blood Affinity on this Katana so you are prepared to use it in higher new game plus cycles. What I like the most of this build is the playstyle, it feels so comfortable and destructive at the same time. This setup is quite strong dealing stance damage too, so playing into playing around crit hits is not a bad idea. This time we are going to use the Naga Kib on plus 25 with the Unsheath Dash of War on the Blood Affinity, the Great Katana on plus 25 with the overhead stance on the Blood Affinity as well, we need any seal we have available to cast our main buffs, and any weapon with the Raptor of the Mist Dash of War to easily dodge the Radan Light Explosion attack. I'm going to be rocking the Ronin's Armor set with the Iron Casa. The best talismans we can use for this build are the Shard of Alexander, the Rolana's Cameo, Millicent's Prosthesis, and the Roden Windsor Insignia. If you are missing one of these talismans, you can use the Lord of Blood's Exultation. However, this is going to be useful for higher New Game Plus cycles, like New Game Plus 6 or New Game Plus 7, where the enemies will have a lot of more HP and you will end up relying on the Bleed Affinity. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tier and the Thorny Crack Tier. Both the Stone Barb Crack Tier is a great alternative too. With this build, we are going to be dealing only physical damage, that's why our best body buff is going to be Blood Boil Aromatic, but if you don't like crafting, you can use Flame Grand Me Strength perfectly fine. Both of our weapons will consume a lot of stamina, so be sure to craft some Pickle Turtle Legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. The best stats we can use for this build are 50 on Vigor, 24 on Mind, 40 on Endurance, 18 on Strength, 70 on Dexterity, 25 on Fate, and 45 on Arcane. Golden Vow and Flame Grand Me Strength are going to be our main buffs. And be sure to have your Scattered Tree Blessing on the level 20 to get the max performance possible in DLC scenarios. The Sword of Night and Flame is certainly a legendary weapon loved by almost every player of the game. It's a very similar weapon to the Relana's Twin Blades. I actually believe that they took this weapon as a base for the Relana's Blades. For that reason, I don't understand why this sword scales B with Intelligence and Fate, while Relana's Twin Blades do it only on C. I know that they didn't want their weapons to be absolutely nuts, but they could have given that B scaling and it would be just fine, I'm pretty sure no one will complain about it. In my opinion, the Sword of Night and Flame is a little bit better in terms of damage, but it lacks of a style compared to the Relana's Twin Blades. We are going to use the Sword of Night on plus 10 and any seal we have available to cast our buffs, any staff we have available to cast Terra Magica, but as we are not going to use a high level of dexterity, the Asus Glintstone staff will allow us to cast our spells faster and to easily dodge the Radan's Light Explosion attack, any weapon with the Raptor of the Mist, Ash of War. In this case, I actually use the Rakshasa's Armor set because I feel this build is more capable of using both elements at the same time, because the Sword of Night and Flame is way easier to use than the Relana's Twin Blades. The best talismans we can use for this build are the Shard of Alexander, the Relana's Cameo, the Fire Scorpion Charm for the Fire Attack, the Magic Scorpion Charm for the Light Attack, and the Old Lord's Talisman to keep our buffs active as much time as it's possible. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tier, and depending on which attack you are going to use on that specific fight, you can decide whether using the Magic Shrouding Crack Tier or the Flame Shrouding Crack Tier. You can use both at the same time, in the same way that with the Scorpion Charms, but I don't believe that is actually optimal. However, that is completely up to you, so if you feel comfortable using the Magic Shrouding Crack Tier paired with the Flame Shrouding Crack Tier and both Scorpion Channels at the same time, it is completely okay, it is not a bad strategy, but I feel like using one element per fight is the most optimal, because it will allow you to get the most out of each attack. To get the max performance of this weapon, we are going to rock 50 Vigor, 25 on Mind, 40 on Endurance, only 12 on Strength and Dexterity, 65 on Intelligence, and 65 on Fate. Golden Vow, Hall of Shabriri, and Terra Magica are going to be our main buffs. Remember to level up your Scattership Blessing all the way up to 20 to get the max performance possible in DLC scenarios. And as the winner of this top, we have the Milady, probably the best and most destructive weapon in Shadow of the Earth Tree. By itself, the weapon is really good, it has a solid moveset and a pretty effective stance damage, but once you combine it with Wind Stance, the Asher War that was specifically designed for this blade, it becomes what I believe is currently the most broken build you could craft around the Relana's Cameo and Stance abilities. This weapon is so good that regardless of the enemy you will face, it's going to be completely destructive. For this extraordinary build, we are going to use the Milady on plus 25 with the Wind Stance Asher War on the Quality Affinity. This way we will get the max damage possible from this weapon. And we need any seal we have available on plus 25 to cast our main buffs and to get the most out of Blood Flame Blade, that's why it needs to be upgraded, and if that seal has a decent fade scaling, it's even better. This time for maximum style, I'm going to be rocking the White Red Armor set with the Dancer's Trucers, but remember that this is completely optional and the best armor set you can use is the Rakshasa's armor set for max damage. The best talismans we can use for this build are the Shard of Alexander, the Relana's Cameo, the Roaring Winds or Insignia, and the Spear Talisman. However, a great alternative is the Blade of Mercy or the Dagger Talisman. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Thorny Crack Tear, but a great alternative is the Stone Bark Crack Tear. With the heavy attack of the skill, we can deal a tremendous amount of stance damage. With the heavy attack of our skill, we can deal a tremendous amount of stance damage and combined with the Stone Bark Crack Tear, it can be destroyed. 
destructive. With this build, we are going to be dealing only physical damage, that's why our best body buff is going to be Blood Bowl Aromatic. But if you don't like tracks, then feel free to use Flame Grand Me Strength. And this weapon consumes a decent amount of stamina, so be sure to craft some Pickle Torten legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. To deal the max amount of damage possible with this weapon and to have an optimal build, we are going to use 50 on Vigor, 25 on Mind, 40 on Endurance, 61 on Strength and Dexterity, and 25 on Faith. Golden Vow, Flame Grand Me Strength, and Blood Flame Blade are going to be our main buffs. Scattered Replacing on the level 20 to deal the max amount of damage possible to the DLC bosses. Let me know in the comment section what do you think of these builds. I really appreciate the buff to the Relance cameo, it was completely necessary. Have a great day guys, my name is Carlos and I'll see you in the next one.